Imagine an aircraft capable of vertical takeoff and landing while rivaling the world's most advanced fighters. Now, what if I told you that Russia might be reviving a decades-old project to create its own sixth-generation fighter, a stealthy, ultra-agile aircraft with hypersonic speed and next-generation avionics? This project could upset the balance of power in the skies, but it also raises many questions. Why is Moscow now revisiting the Yak-141 concept? What challenges lie ahead, and does this initiative even have a chance of coming to fruition? Beneath the surface, we uncover the backstage story of a Russian program that could change the future of aerial combat. Russia has a long history of developing VTOL, which stands for Vertical Takeoff and Landing Aircraft, from the Yakovlev Yak-38 in the 1970s to the revolutionary Yak-141 project of the 1980s. Nowadays, reports indicate that Moscow is seriously considering reviving this concept to design a sixth-generation fighter. Why now? This project is part of a broader ambition to modernize the Russian armed forces in response to the growing presence of the F-35B in Western naval aviation fleets. Russia seeks to develop a serious competitor, and what better starting point than an aircraft inspired by the Yak-141? Despite its cancellation, the Yak-141 left a mark on military aviation and even influenced American engineers during the development of the F-35B. Before we look toward the future, let's briefly revisit the past. In the 1980s, the USSR faced a troubling strategic reality. Its naval aviation was significantly lagging behind American forces, as the United States deployed the F-14 Tomcat and was already exploring advanced flight concepts. The Soviet Navy was forced to rely on the Yak-38, a functional VTOL aircraft, but far from the performance expected of a true air superiority fighter. Aware of this shortfall, the USSR tasked Yakovlev's design bureau with creating an aircraft that would revolutionize Soviet naval warfare, a fighter capable of vertical takeoff and landing while achieving supersonic speeds and delivering firepower on par with American carrier-based fighters. Thus was born the Yakovlev Yak-1141. From the outset, the Yak-141 was an extremely ambitious technological endeavor. Unlike the underpowered, secondary role Yak-38, the Yak-141 was envisioned as a true air superiority fighter, capable of matching the American F-14 Tomcat. However, achieving such a feat required overcoming unprecedented technological challenges. The core difficulty lay in combining supersonic speed with VTOL capability, a challenge that even the United States had not fully solved at the time. To meet these demands, Yakovlev opted for a three-engine configuration, one main engine with afterburner, supplemented by two smaller vertical lift engines dedicated solely to takeoff and landing. This arrangement was intended to provide sufficient thrust for a smooth transition between vertical and horizontal flight. On paper, the Yak-141 was an impressive machine. Its aerodynamic fuselage incorporated advanced composite materials, a rare innovation at the time, that reduced weight and improved performance. The aircraft was also fitted with a next-generation Doppler radar and an advanced electronic suite, making it a platform designed for modern warfare. In terms of armament, it could carry up to six missiles, such as the R-73 and R-27, which were already in service on the MiG-29 and Su-27, and could be configured for ground attack missions with anti-ship missiles and guided bombs. This versatility made it a major strategic asset for the Soviet Navy, envisioned as the ideal aircraft for future carrier operations. After years of development and wind tunnel testing, the Yak-141 took its maiden flight in 1987 with promising results. It was stable, fast, and capable of smooth transitions between vertical and horizontal flight. In 1991, the Yak-141 achieved a major milestone by performing its first vertical landing on an aircraft carrier, seemingly confirming the project's viability. However, that same year, as the USSR collapsed, Military funding was abruptly cut and Russian naval aviation ambitions were put on hold. Although the Yak-141 was extremely promising, it was left without a future. In 1992, the project was officially abandoned and its two prototypes were relegated to museums. Despite never entering mass production, the Yak-141's legacy endures. 
its thrust vectoring system and 95-degree tilting engine directly inspired the development of Lockheed Martin's F-35B Lightning II, the only operational stealth fighter of its kind today. In the 1990s, Lockheed Martin even officially collaborated with Yakovlev to obtain test data from the Yak-141, and while the American firm never acknowledged a direct influence, it is undeniable that several F-35B innovations trace their origins back to the Soviet Yak-141. Now the question arises, why would Russia seek to revive this concept? Several factors shed light on this decision. The increasing power of the F-35B, adopted in ever greater numbers by the US and its allies, has provided a significant strategic edge in naval aviation. Moreover, there is an urgent need to modernize the Russian Navy. The Admiral Kuznetsov, Russia's only operational aircraft carrier, is in dire technical straits and requires a complete overhaul. Russia's technological advancements since the 1980s in stealth, AI-assisted avionics and hypersonic propulsion could pave the way for a VTOL fighter far superior to the original Yak-141. However, significant challenges remain. Western sanctions restrict access to high-tech components and Russia's economic difficulties complicate funding. Reviving the Yak-141 as a version 2.0 would require overcoming technical hurdles in engine design, ensuring a propulsion system that provides stable vertical thrust without sacrificing horizontal performance. Developing an engine that combines stealth, power, and endurance without relying on foreign components will be a major technical challenge. Another major issue is the astronomical cost of such a program. Developing a sixth-generation fighter demands billions of dollars in investment, an amount that Russia currently struggles to muster amid ongoing sanctions. Additionally, the operational viability of this fighter depends on having a modern carrier infrastructure. Building new carriers or adapting existing amphibious assault ships to host a VTOL fighter would require considerable investment, which seems unlikely in the near future. Additionally, rising global interest in sixth-generation fighter programs is driving innovation in hybrid combat systems. Experts speculate that a modernized Yak-141 could merge manned capabilities with unmanned drone swarms and advanced AI, revolutionizing real-time battlefield decision-making. This integration promises enhanced situational awareness, improved coordination, and unprecedented agility during combat operations. By setting new standards in stealth and networked warfare, such a project could not only counter Western technological advances, but also redefine the future landscape of aerial combat. Geopolitical tensions further complicate the project. Russia's international isolation limits its ability to collaborate with other military or technological powers. Without major industrial allies or access to Western technologies, Moscow must redouble its efforts to make this program work. If Russia can overcome these obstacles, we might see a serious competitor to the F-35B emerge in the coming years. Such a project could not only bolster Russian naval aviation power, but also offer an alternative for nations seeking an option outside of American fighters. Ultimately, the success of this program will depend on many factors, funding, technological innovation, and the ability to build the necessary infrastructure. Do you think Russia will succeed in bringing this project to fruition? Could a modernized Yak-141 rival the F-35B? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to stay updated on my future videos.